our special requirements level 10. We need a minimum of one C flight skill, a second flight skill, at least a B, and then a minimum of a C turn. And it could be an LA turn, could be, could be a giant half, could be a fail that has a half turn over the low bar, anything that has a long axis turn. It doesn't have to be a salto. So a C element, and then you can't use the mount or the dismount in that particular requirement, and then a C salto dismount. So our start value at level 10 starts at a 9.5. We are looking for three A's, three B's, and two C's. Make sure that you count those elements all the time. Most of the routines have more than enough elements, but every now and then one will seem kind of short and you'll hope that she has at least eight things that count and at least three Bs and two Cs. Remember that when you're counting those elements, a higher level skill, a C or a D or an E, can always count for a lower valued skill, like a B or an A, but needed to. Our special requirements are worth five tenths each, and we are allowed to earn five tenths in bonus from our nine five. So you write your nine five on your paper, you check, does she have three A's, three B's, two C's? Good. Uh, does she have the four special requirements? Yes. And then you add in the bonus that she got to get to her 10-0 start value. Remember, level 10 doesn't have any restrictions. Do level 10, they can do everything, D's and E's. But if you do a D, you can only give D bonus credit for it one time. So she could do a Takachev, then go back and do another one later. She's not going to get another D bonus for the second one. But if she does a D or E skill, so let's say it was a Takachev, and she doesn't even touch the bar, which this is not uncommon that they go for it and they're away from the bar and they land on the mat on their stomach. Um, but if that happens, then of course it's a zero value, but she can repeat that skill. Typically they will get up and do it again if they know they can make it because they want the bonus for it and they're trying to connect it to something else. So if she doesn't touch the bar the first time, it's a zero, but she can get up and do it again in a different combination. Well, if she doesn't fall, you know, it's a different combination she would get the D credit that time of the plus one. Okay, uh, when a D or E release element is followed in direct connection to a B release skill, the B can be raised to a C and then be awarded the connective value of D plus C and get that plus one. So an example would be when they do a release on the high bar like a ginger, and then out of the ginger, they do an overshoot, which is really just a B bail over the low bar. Then that B raises to C. And because she did it out of a D release, and the D release did come from a handstand originally, then she would be able to get the D plus C and then get that D credit and the plus one. We know that our start is at nine five. We can get five tenths in bonus, but at level 10, we can earn an additional one tenth bonus for an E skill. So then their start value would actually be a 10 plus one. It's not a 10 one because you can't give a score of a 10 one. You can only give a 10 O as the highest score, but any E on bars is eligible for that extra plus one. The rules are that they have to have a 10-0 start to begin with. All their special requirements and obviously difficulty has to be fulfilled. And they have to have at least six tenths in bonus. So they only really need five to get the 10-0 start, but to get the 10 plus one, they have to have six. And one of those skills has to be an E. Let's talk about other bonus. If you have two C skills and they each have to have turn or flight, you can get plus one. If you connect two C skills and they are three, six, seven groups, your clear hips, your toe ons, your stalders, and they don't have to have a turn or flight, you can get plus one. 
or if you connect a C plus D or a C plus E connection, no turn or flight required in the Ds or Es, you can get plus one. But then you have to have two Ds to get the plus two and Ds, it doesn't matter if they have turn or flight. But six of the skills have a higher value now. So the, and they're all three, six, seven group skills. So the three, six, seven group, of course, are your toans, your clear hips, and your stalders. Those skills that have a half turn to a reverse grip, a mixed grip, or an inverted grip have gone up in value to D. So your clear hip circle with a half turn to a different grip is a D. Now, a lot of them will do a giant blind. The giants have not been raised uh, with a half turn to the reverse grip. So it's got to be the clear hip or it's got to be the toe on. So it's the same thing on the toe on. So we have the half turns from the toe on position to a different grip and they went to D. Also, we have the stalders. So the stalder half turn to reverse grip or mixed grip or cross mixed grip. Those are all or invert grip. They all go to D. We do have also the full turns. So the clear hip to handstand with the full turn. The toe on handstand with a full turn, the stalder handstand backward with the full turn all went to E. So those are opportunities for them to get that plus one because they're E value skills. A couple things about composition on bars. So on bars, we only have two areas that we look at. One is the choice of the release elements is up to two tenths. What do you have to have to get no deduction? Two Ds, two Ds or better releases. And then everything else works its way down to or up to the two tenths. We also have choice of the dismount of up to one. So if anybody has a D or higher dismount, they don't have a problem. If anybody has a D skill into a C dismount, no problem. If it's less than that, then we start to take deductions. So choice of elements is up to two tenths. We want to see different groups of skills, not just the same family throughout their routine. Failure to perform two of the three different groups is a minus one tenth. They need to show us a forward circle or release, minimum of B. A forward circle would be a front giant. A release would be a Jaeger or other things that circle forward, then they could show us three, six, seven scale minimum of B. So that would be your clear hip stalder and toe on. And then they can choose to show us an element with a 180 turn. Now the 180 turn minimum of C does not have to be a pirouette. Originally, this was a pirouette. Now it's a 180 turn. So it can be a bail, could be a ginger, it just has to be on the bar, cannot be in the mount or dismount. So two of those out of three, uh, and then they're good. So in the past, we had the deduction of one tenth for more than one squat on the low bar or toe circle around. If they did two, then they get the one tenth off. But now if the gymnast falls, we are allowing her to do another squat on the low bar with no deduction after a fall. Remember, after a fall, our judging and optionals starts when they do an element. So if she does a crummy glide and doesn't extend or doesn't point her feet or knees are bent or taking off, if she does a kip and kips up to a front support and stops and then does a cast squat on, now she has an extra swing. So we're not taking the one tenths for the squat on, but you know we have to still be aware of what the skills are she is doing and take off execution appropriately. 